We invite you to join our new church, Miracle Healing Center, on Sundays at 10 a.m. at the Cockrell Middle School in McKinney, Texas, with Pastor Sean and Amy Pinder. We welcome people of all ages and backgrounds to come and experience God's love and power, as well as join us as we fulfill the Great Commission, preaching the gospel to the lost and demonstrating God's power. Plan your visit today. Visit MiracleHealingCenter.net. We can't wait to meet you. Give me you, because everything else can wait. Help me worship him this morning. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Come on. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Thank you, Lord. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. And it's me, oh Lord, I'm on my knees. Give me you. Give me you. Come on, let's worship him this morning. Sing it to him. Give me you. Because everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait. We love you this morning. Give me you. And I hope I'm not too late. Tell him, Lord, give me you. And Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. It's me, oh Lord. It's me, oh Lord. And I'm on my knees crying out to you. And it's me, oh Lord. And I'm on my knees. Give me you. Come on, worship him. Give me you. Sing it to the king. Give me you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. We love you this morning. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Tell him, Lord, give me you. 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 It's me, oh Lord, and I'm on my knees. Crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees in you. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith together and we lift your wonderful people up before you. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that as we continue in this series, we pray that you would help your people to understand the big picture, give them insight, give them revelation from the scriptures, enlightenment, encouragement, strength, nourishment, faith, healing, miracles, signs and wonders. Send confirmation through the word of God. You said in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established have your way this morning not our will but your perfect will be done in the lives of your people tuning into this broadcast in the name of jesus christ we pray somebody say amen <laughs> glory be to god so good to be back with you on this morning as we continue this 
amazing series, Understanding the Big Picture. So now we are jumping into the life of Joseph as we continue the series, Understanding the Big Picture. And on this morning specifically, we are going to talk about hated because of favor. Hated because of favor. When God favors you, when God's plan begin to be revealed in your life, everybody is not going to be excited about it. And you just, you might as well prepare yourself and get over that. Don't be naive. Everybody is not going to route root for you. Not everyone's going to be happy for you. Not everyone's going to be excited about what God's doing in your life. Are you listening to me? As we go into the life of Joseph from the book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 1 says, So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the second account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, Joseph was a young'un. <laughs> he was 17 years old. He often tended his father's flocks. He worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Billa and Zilpah. But Joseph reported to his father the bad things his brothers were doing. Now you know you're gonna have trouble right there. <laughs> and this, the young people call him a young people would call him this generation. He's a snitch. He's a snitch. <laughs> so Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. So the Holy Ghost is already setting the stage up for a fight. Come on, somebody. You have someone who's ratting on you or tattle, tattling on you. You gonna you gonna take issues with that person. Come on, come on, let's tell the truth. Don't, don't act like you all of that. You know what amazes me when we preach on Joseph? Everybody wants, everybody wants to be Joseph in the story. But you know, come on, the truth be told, we all know we weren't, we weren't always a Joseph. Come on, talk to me. My God, everyone wants to be Joseph in the story. You understand? Because they know the end result. We have the privilege to know this story back and front. Amen. But some of us, when you walk in these things out, it's not so clear. Amen. So Joseph was the toddler. He was the rider. He was the one reporting to his dad all of their wicked deeds. So you know they're going to be trouble in the camp. And then to make matters worse, verse 3 says, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. Now I don't care how much tongues you speak in and how much you shout and praise God. You know if your father favored one and got the coat of many colors for one, the rest of you are going to take issues with it. Ah, uh, come on. Come on. You ain't always Joseph in the story. Lord have mercy. So the Bible says, but his brothers hated him. His brothers hated him. My, my, my. They hated him because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Of course, it's going to be animosity. Of course, there's going to be envy. Of course, there's going to be jealous. Because one's getting treated better than the rest. And then to make matters worse, Jacob made a coat of many colors just for Joseph. He should have made it for all of them. But all of this is setting the stage of setting the stage for the plan and the purpose of God to be fulfilled in Joseph's life. The Bible says in verse 5, one night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. <laughs> uh, jo Jacob has already favored Joseph, and to make matters worse, now God is visiting Joseph 
in a dream. And you see, this has to do with God's choice. It has to do with God's plan. It has to do with God's will. My, my, my. Now, God gave Joseph a dream. And this isn't helping the situation with his brothers. This is adding salt to their open wounds and, and their feelings towards Joseph. This dream isn't going to help the situation at all. But you know, God can care less what people think when he get ready to bring something to pass in your life. Come on, somebody. When God gets ready to fulfill his plan, God is going to show up and show out. And the Bible says he will show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are, are, are strong towards him. Come on, somebody. So one night Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain, and suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. Lord have mercy, Joseph. It's amazing how quick your enemies can get the gift of interpretation. Because listen to what his brother said. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? They knew what the dream meant. That these guys, ain't, these guys are not stupid at all. They knew exactly that what that dream meant. That it just amazes me that even your enemies sometimes can understand the interpretation of your dream, and they can only understand it if God wills it. If he want them to understand it, God can care less if they know what his plans is. God is bold about his plans. He's letting your worst enemies know exactly what it is that he's about to do in your life. And there ain't a thing they can't do about it. Praise God. Whatever God says, it's going to come to pass. Now watch this. The end of verse 8 says, and they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them lord have mercy hated because of favor hated because of a dream they hated him god is showing joseph a dream and little that his brothers know that this dream has everything to do with with protecting them you see, how they, uh, if they were able to see all the way into the future and realize that this dream was all about Joseph rescuing them in the time of famine, they would have chilled out and they would have been glad about it. But God doesn't always allow you and your enemies to understand every step of his plan. Are you listening to me? He reveals it in stages. The scripture says, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. God reveals his plan. That's why the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You got to take it's one step at a time. The path of the just shines brighter and brighter under the perfect day. So the more, the more you walk in obedience to his will, the more you walk with God, the more you begin to obey his word, God will shine his light brighter and brighter. He will give you more and more understanding. It's like a car late in the night taking a trip from one state to another. It can be pitch black dark. But guess what? With the lights on in the front of that car, it shines just far enough for the car to see where to keep going. And you can drive, you can drive over a thousand miles like that with just enough light to see where you got to go. That's why David said, thy word, O Lord, it's a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my pathway. Are you listening to me? So the Bible says they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Joseph couldn't keep his mouth shut. And I, I hate to say this, but reality is this. When you see God, when you see God gives you a dream, it's hard to keep the thing to yourself. 
and God wants you to talk about it. God can care less who is for it or who's against it. it I'm telling you, you got to talk about it. When that dream is from God, you. I, there were so many times God spoke certain things to me, and I thought, man, I ain't going to share this with nobody. But how can you find yourself minutes later talking about it? You just can't hold it to yourself because it's too much for you to carry. Come on, somebody. And some of you watching me right now, some of you even said it. I'm not going to tell nobody about this. I ain't going to talk about it. And sure enough, you write, you find yourself talking about it. That Because it's from God. You can't keep it to yourself. It's too powerful. Come on, somebody. Soon Joseph had another dream. And again, and again he told his brothers about it. Listen. I have had another dream, he said. I'm sure they were thinking, oh God, here we go again. Joseph said, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowed low before me. This time, he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers. But his father scolded him. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is funny. You'll see why I'm laughing. His father scolded him. What kind of dream is that? He asked. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? <laughs> you see, Jacob was cool with the dream as long as his sons were bowing down to Joseph. When Joseph's second dream revealed that Jacob also will bow to Joseph, then all of a sudden he had trouble with it. As long as it was your brother's bowing to you, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm good with that. But the minute Joseph's dream revealed that even Jacob would bow before him, now Jacob have trouble with the dream. Come on, somebody. And a, a lot of you tuning in this morning, I got a smile on my face and a smile in my heart because... It's amazing how everybody wants to be Joseph in this story. Every time you preach it, I, I, I'm, we are all guilty, right? But how would you feel? This is why I'm not too rough. You know, I used to be rough on these brothers when I first got saved and first started reading this. But the older I get and the more I live my life, the more I realize, I go a little easy on Joseph brothers now. And you know why? Because, let's face reality, if somebody was telling you and me about a dream and saying, we're going to bow down to them, <laughs> Lord have mercy. I got a whole lot of people laughing right now. You tell me how happy you would be, I'm going to bow down to who? Little old scrawny you, the devil is a liar. Come on, somebody. You, 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 you ate too much pizza last night. You tripping. That dream ain't from... I mean, all of us would have issues with that. You let somebody tell you, oh, yeah, you know, I dream. You're bowing down. I mean, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Praise be to God. So, old Jake, Jacob was fine as long as it was his other boys bowing down to Joseph. But now Joseph saying, no, you're going to bow to that. Now nah, Jacob have problems with it. But you see, they all missed, they did not understand what God was showing to Joseph. They did not, even Joseph didn't fully understand what God was showing him. But God showed him anyhow, because it was God's plan. I'm talking to somebody this morning. You hated because of favor. You are hated because of God's dream. But you're in a good place. I said you are in a good place. You are in a good place. God is showing you his plans for your life. God is showing you his will for your life. And the enemy is stirred up about it. You know, Jesus talked about the parable of the sower. Jesus said, when the word of God is sown, Satan comes immediately. Verse 11 said, but while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. I'm talking to some people this morning. You are hated. People are jealous of you because of God's favor, because of God's dream. Listen, 
it's not this is nothing new the apostle peter said think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which comes to try you this is normal for the child of god jesus said you will be hated by all men for my name's sake but he who endures to the end the same shall be saved be encouraged saints be encouraged god is on your side you are about to understand the big picture god's given you understanding he's given you revelation it's going to be all right you coming out of this thing more than a conqueror just hang in there god is giving you god is giving you understanding of the big picture just hang in there don't get discouraged don't throw the towel in god call you i, I gotta pray for somebody lord have mercy me and pastor amy join our faith with you we pray for you right now you are being hated you are being mistreated people are jealous of you they are plotting and planning against you but i rebuke that in the name of jesus we declare over your life this morning under the anointing of god the weapon form will not prosper the weapon form against you will not prosper in the name of jesus christ it will not prosper i rebuke the spirit of discouragement from off of you i rebuke it from off of you be strong in the name of jesus be strong god is on your side i pray strength in your spirit i pray strength in your soul in your body some of your focus have been broken but i command you to be focused in the name of jesus god chose you god call you god have favored you god have trusted you with his dream and it will come to pass in due time it will come to pass in the name of jesus christ praise god listen i want to give you an opportunity to support the preaching of the gospel of the lord jesus christ this ain't the time this ain't the time to be stingy or hold back no we are preaching the gospel this is the most important work on the face of the earth so i'm asking you don't just watch don't just eat the word up and enjoy it but support the work of god and many of you are but i'm just saying we need you more than ever to continue giving don't pull back this ain't the time to pull back souls are being saved sick bodies are being healed marriages are being restored broken lives are being restored to give and support the work of god you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give you can also give through the ministry paypal account that address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinder ministries you can also give through the ministry zell account the ministry zell email address is info at seanpender.net you can also give through the ministry cash app account the ministry cash app address is the dollar sign sean pinder ministries you can also text to give all you have to do is text the letters spm to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you you can also mail your donations into the ministry just remember to make your checks and money orders out to sean pinder ministries p.o box 2726 mckinney texas 75070 never forget me and my beautiful wife past amy we love you we appreciate you we'll never take you for granted and join us again as we continue the series understanding the big picture we'll see you again on tomorrow morning god bless take care bye-bye
From the author of Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks comes an inspiring new book about living an undefeated life through Christ. The harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Combining biblical insight and real world experience, Pastor Sean Pinner unpacks practical truths and encouragements that will prepare you for your next battle and help you win the one you are currently in. Somebody shout! The harder the battle, the sweeter the victory! Warfare is an inevitable aspect of any Christian life, but the fight you face does not have to destroy you. You cannot avoid your battles, but you can make the most of them. Learn how to approach your battles correctly and gain peace, understanding, strength, and ultimate victory. Order The Harder the Battle, The Sweeter the Victory today. Available on Amazon and all major book suppliers. Don't merely survive your battles, learn how to thrive. It's here, the book we've been waiting for. Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks to Us. A complete guide to hearing God. Pastor Sean Pinner gives readers life-changing keys on exploring, understanding, and experiencing the voice of God, which every believer can hear on a daily basis. Packed with powerful revelations, this book shares the methods, means, and motivations for the voice of God, and provide answers to questions like how to hear God, recognize His voice, tap into His guidance, and much more. Receive confidence on hearing God through the Word, dreams and visions, divine impressions, and more. And discover a much deeper and more intimate walk with the Lord. Order Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks Today, available on Amazon and all major book suppliers. Your journey into the powerful realms of God's voice starts here.